Hi friends, welcome to our channel, Total Output Power Solutions. I am Manohar Tatwavadi and in this session we will be discussing about procedures for cold start of boilers and turbines in relation to 270-210 MW corner fired boilers and turbines. The topics covered in the session will be cold startup and in the cold startup we will be discussing about the preparations for cold startup, initial firing precautions, boiler light up procedure, boiler light up, actual boiler light up and turbine rolling, then turbine and boiler loading further. Preparations for boiler light up. It is assumed that at this time the following preparatory work has been completed. The unit has been chemically cleaned and the steam lines have been blown. The safety walls have been set and the boiler drum lever boiler drum has been filled to slightly above the normal operating level with properly treated field water. The field water tank should have been filled with field water at normal level. All control systems have been checked and are available for service. All instrumentation and associated mechanical equipment have been checked and made available for service. Check all safety interlock system prior to startup to ensure proper functioning. The oil firing equipment has been checked out to assure proper functioning. Recheck items such as oil guns inserted and properly coupled. Check the gaskets between the unions so that no leakage is there. All isolating manual walls are open and all control walls are closed. The pulverizers and feeders have been checked and are available for service. You must refer to mill starting sequence under mill operating procedures. The wind boxes have been checked for proper damper positioning tilts at and tilts at horizontal etc. The field water system, instrumentation and equipment have been checked and are available for operation. It is recommended that during the startups the field water is controlled remote manually until a continuous flow is established. To avoid the possibility of oxygen corrosion in the boiler, the use of undeaerated field water of temperature less than 100 degrees centigrade is not recommended. All air handling equipments have been checked and are available for service. All air and gas duct dampers should be in the startup position. Preparations Notes and Caution Notes You must refer to the fan manufacturer instructions for operating details of fans. It is assumed that the unit will be started with both FD fans and ID fans. If the unit is started with only one set of fans and air heaters, the corresponding dampers associated with the equipment to be kept open. Dampers associated with idle equipment should be closed. Caution: The FD fans are generally capable of developing drafts in excess of the furnace design pressure. Therefore, the operator must take care to establish and maintain an airflow path through the unit prior to starting the ID fan and prior to operating the ID fan inlet damper by ensuring that the other dampers in the system are in the startup positions. ID fan outlet shutoff gate closed. Inlet regulating vanes dampers are also in closed position during starting. Keep the FD fan outlet shutoff dampers closed. Keep the FD fan regulating vanes or blades in the minimum position. Primary air fan outlet shutoff gate and inlet control dampers are also closed. Wind box auxiliary air dampers are open. The scanner emergency air damper are, is closed. Pulverizer seal air fan shutoff dampers open. Air and gas dampers around the air heater are open. The ID fan inlet damper 
must be kept closed until after the fan is started. This procedure will minimize the possibility of developing excessive negative pressure in the unit during the starting procedure. Check that the air heaters have been prepared for service. Adequate means of extinguishing air heater fires is available and ready for use. Refer to the air heater instructions for details. Note: The operator must take care to maintain the furnace draft within safe limit at all times. He must be especially careful when draft and air flow controls are in manual mode. He must be alert at all times for possible malfunctions of automatic control equipment resulting in abnormal excursions in the furnace pressure either negative or positive. The soup blowing equipment has been checked for proper operation and the system is in startup condition. That means all the blowers are retracted, main steam isolating supply wall is open and the drain wall is also open. All sup these superheaters spray water control walls and block walls are closed. All boiler, superheater and reheater drains and vents walls are in the startup position. Refer to the wall operating diagram. The furnace gas temperature probe is in working order and available for service. The turbine generator is available for service and has been prepared for service as described in the manufacturer's instructions. Cooling water and compressed air services are available. Initial firing precautions Note, To ensure a maximum safety margin during startups, it is mandatory that at least 30% of full load airflow be maintained in order to produce the following conditions. An air rich furnace atmosphere. This avoids the possibility of accumulation of explosive mixture in the event of poor or delayed ignition after the fuel is introduced into the furnace. High excess air through the air heater minimizes the dilution of combustion air by inert carried over by the air heater rotor. Air flow should be increased when the boiler reaches a load where additional air is required to maintain the rated operating excess air. During startups, lighting off is done with the lower igniters and warm up oil guns. Warming, warming up can be accomplished with either the warm up oil guns or the fuel oil firing. In either case, the required firing rate must permit operation of an entire elevation of fuel nozzles without exceeding the furnace exit gas temperature limitation. To minimize the possibility of adverse visible stack emission, it is desirable to use the warm up oil guns till attained to at least 35 kg per square centimeter drum pressure and 177 degrees secondary degree centigrade secondary air temperature before firing pulverized coal. When bringing the unit up to pressure and temperature, the saturated steam temperature rise must be limited to 110 degrees centigrade per hour as per the startup curve. The startup curve also shows the corresponding rate of drum pressure increase. The capacity variation curve shows the capacity pressure relationship required for proper water wall circulation. At reduced drum pressure, the steam flow must not exceed the corresponding maximum allowable capacity that is percentage design capacity as shown in the curve. During all startups, the firing rate should be controlled to keep the maximum furnace exit gas temperature below 540 degrees centigrade as measured by the furnace outlet gas temperature probe until adequate flow is established through reheater by cutting in the HPLP bypass. After rolling the turbine, the steam temperature and pressure rise at the turbine throttle should be at all times be in accordance with the limits prescribed by the turbine manufacturer. To avoid the possibility of oxygen corrosion in the boiler, the use of undeaerated feed water of temperature less than 100 degrees centigrade is not recommended. All air handling equipments have been checked 
and are available for service all air and gas duct dampers should be in the startup position boiler light up procedure start both the air preheaters then start two id fans and both fd fans after starting the fd fan open the shut off dampers for minimum 30% air flow by variable pitch control although it is sufficient to operate one set of fans until the turbines carry a light load it may be desirable to light off with both sets of fans in order to avoid unbalancing of the air flow when the load is being carried open the air preheater air bypass duct start the scanner and seal air fans adjust the fan and vent box dampers to permit a purge air flow of at least 30% of the total air flow and a furnace draft of approximately 12.7 mm of water gauge when the fans are started the secondary air damper control should adjust the auxiliary air dampers to obtain approximately 37 mm of water gauge vent box to furnace differential pressure check that all the other purge permissives are satisfied initiate a furnace purge upon completion of purge cycle check that all the firing prerequisites are satisfied place the temperature probe in service initiate a light off sequence of the lower elevation of igniters and warm up oil guns refer to the furnace safeguard supervisory system igniter and air cooled oil guns instructions for details during warming up, warming up period keep open the economizer recirculating line wall open blow down the unit as required to maintain the drum water level inside in the gauge glass the firing rate should be controlled to keep the furnace exit gas temperature below 540 degrees centigrade until steam flow through reheater is established establish a slight flow through reheater through superheater by opening its start up vent more superheater drains and vents may be opened if necessary for increasing the steam temperature to match the turbine conditions note hplb bypass station helps the unit to be quickly synchronized increase the firing rate as required within permissible limits of 110 degrees centigrade per hour to raise the pressure if necessary with fuel oil while the unit is heating up frequent checks should be made of the boiler expansion movements special attention should be given to the expansion of the lower part of the boiler relative to the building steel expansion movements should be recorded for comparison with future startups refer to the expansion movements diagrams given by the supplier maintain the drum water level at normal and check boiler water concentrations and constituents as frequently as as required to maintain the proper boiler water conditions close the economizer recirculation wall when continuous feed water flow is established before raising a vacuum in the condenser make sure that all the reheater vents or drains that open to the atmosphere are closed leave drains and vents connected to the hp drain flash tank open until the turbine is carrying a light load as drum pressure increases progressively throttle the final superheater outlet header vent that is startup vent and other startup drains used that is main steam line drains turbine drains etc sufficient steam flow must be maintained at all times to assure cleaning the superheater elements of condensate increase the firing rate as necessary without exceeding the furnace exit gas temperature limitation do not close startup vent completely until steam flow through the turbine is established start rolling the turbine as soon as the minimum permissible startup pressure and temperature specified by the turbine manufacturer are reached refer to turbine manufacturer instructions when bringing the turbine up to speed the firing rate should be controlled to prevent the furnace ex exit gas temperature from exceeding 540 degrees centigrade when the turbine is up to synchronous speed it may be synchronized 
at this point the gas temperature probe may be withdrawn and the firing rate increased as required in no case should the firing rate exceed than what is necessary to satisfy steam demand note if the unit is put on line before design operating pressure is reached further increase of firing rate should be in accordance with the start up rate the steam flow must not exceed the maximum allowable capacity if the unit was started with one set of fans then start the other second set of fans place additional level of oil guns in service as the load demands replace the warm up oil guns with the load carrying guns after the first level of main oil guns are in service and the fire is stable if coal was not fired previously the pulverizer serving the lowest elevation of coal nozzles that is adjacent to the warm up oil guns should be prepared for operation so that it can readily be started at this time refer to section furnace safeguard supervisory system for startup sequence and controls prior to placing pulverizers in service ensure that one of the pf fans developing adequate header pressure is in service refer to furnace safeguard supervisory system for instructions the coal fuel air dampers should remain closed until ignition is established check to see that the nozzle tilts are horizontal place the second primary air fan in service if not done previously if a pulverizer was started during the warming up period increasing load requirements can be met by increasing fuel flow through this pulverizer when the pulverizer is put into service ensure that the corresponding seal air fan is also in service when placing the first coal mill in service check that the pulverizer start permissives that is ignition energy etc are satisfied if ignition does not take place immediately after coal appears at the coal nozzles stop the feeder determine the cause of the ignition failure before attempting to restart the feeder maintain proper coal air temperature leaving the pulverizers regulate the hot and cold air damper to hold between 66 degrees centigrade and 90 degrees centigrade at the pulverizer outlet at no time should this temperature exceed 95 degrees centigrade if it should exceed 95 degrees centigrade the hot air damper must be closed note pulverizer startup will cause a sudden and sharp increase of steam pressure this will level out rapidly as load is placed on the turbine take the second coal mill in service in a similar manner when the coal feeding of the first mill has reached 90% of its maximum refer f ss for loading unloading shutting off of mills and furnace oil and light oil burners the furnace safeguard supervisory system and the secondary air damper controls should close the auxiliary air dampers serving compartments adjacent to coal nozzles which are out of service when the boiler reaches 20% of the full load increase the wind box to furnace differential pressure to approximately 100 mm of water cooler it is essential that the air flow to the furnace is sufficient for the firing rate at all times automatic control equipment is normally arranged to maintain such a balanced condition the oxygen measuring devices which are often tied in with the air flow control should be checked periodically to assure continuous and dependable operation place additional pulverizers in service as the unit loading demands place the steam temperature controls and combustion controls on auto when the firing conditions are stable and the temperature and pressure control set points have been reached refer to the control manufacturer's instructions for specific procedures adjust the speed of field water supply to the boiler as necessary to maintain normal water level as per drum level operating curve field water control should be placed on automatic as soon as possible and practicable when the continuous field water flow is established turbine and boiler loading when the unit firing conditions are stabilized that is unit taking more than 30% of full load all warm up oil guns and igniters may be taken out of service after stabilization of full load the unit load may be put on auto thanks for watching we will be discussing about the loading and unloading of the boiler in the next video